Welcome. You are watching AI Africa, your antenna in tech on the continent with myself, Fifi Peters. In today's segment, we are joined by the tech giant, Microsoft, their new president for Africa, Lillian Barnard. She's a recognized global tech leader and will be getting her views on AI adoption in Africa and what it could mean for growth. Feel free, as always, to share your uh, thoughts with us on X using the hashtag AIAfrica. And if you have missed any of the latest trends in AI this week, don't worry, we do have you covered. In fact, gamo has got you covered. She's standing by with those details. Gamo, what is trending? Thanks, Fifi. And here's a wrap of what's trending in AI in the global landscape. US tech giants have garnered an impressive $2.4 trillion to their market capitalizations over the past year. This due to an increased interest in generative artificial intelligence, according to a new report from venture capital firm Excel. In the firm's annual Euroscape report, the share price values of big technology firms such as Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon and Nvidia rose by an average of 36% year over year. For more news on the continent, it's over to AI Africa's latest news correspondent, Chanel AI, to wrap up today's bulletin. Moving over to AI news on the continent, criminals this week used artificial intelligence to impersonate head of the African Union Musa Foki through the use of deepfake video calls. The AU reportedly fell victim to cybercrime on Wednesday as fraudsters replicated illegitimate video calls with European leaders under false pretenses. This according to a post on X, formerly Twitter, by AU spokesperson in the chairperson's office Eber Colondo. And finally, South Africa's Competition Commission announced on Tuesday an official probe on whether artificial intelligence models, digital and social media platforms in the country managed by companies including Google and Facebook are limiting the country's news and media companies' ability to generate revenue. The independent statutory body says it will investigate market features that allegedly distort competition for advertising revenue between news media or digital platforms. And that's all from me. It's over to you, Fifi. Now, Microsoft has embarked on a five-year plan in Africa to build digital assets and capabilities in 10 million small and medium-sized enterprises. The plan also entails supporting 10,000 startups with the capacity needed to scale and providing digital skills to 30 million Africans. To discuss how this plan is being actioned, we're joined by Microsoft's president for Africa, Lillian Barnard. Lillian, thanks so much for your time, ma'am. Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you on your role. I think it's a pretty big deal. Uh, it's around four months into uh, the role as, as per my research. But I'd just like to understand what is top of mind in terms of your agenda as you look at technology and the advancement of technology in Africa. Thank you, Fifi, and it's just fantastic to be here with you. And uh, thank you so much for congratulating me. We are, of course, super excited about our new mandate. And it, it is the first time that Microsoft actually has put the continent together, even though we have been operating in the continent for more than 30 years. And in Africa right now, we are really focusing on creating an inclusive digital economic environment. And we are doing that by making sure that we empower Africans with the right tools and capabilities. We really want to make sure that everybody benefits from the latest tech advancements, cloud and AI. And you've already mentioned the numbers are, we are making significant investments in skills and tools. Um, for example, our partnership with the African Development Bank is focusing on 50 million youth. We're also focusing on 50 million Africans. But at the same time, as much as we're doing all of the skilling and upskilling, we're also focusing on employability because it ultimately is about jobs. Capacity building for us is super key, and uh, I'm not too sure if many people do know, but we have development centers across the continent in Kenya, in Lagos, as well as in Egypt, Lagos, Nigeria. And the purpose of these development centers are for us really to focus on growing our engineering and developer talent, because we truly want to fast track, we want to grow, and we want to enhance African tech talent. Now you've mentioned already about um, SMEs and uh, small medium enterprises are super important. And we are making several you know, uh, investments. We are focusing on capacity building. We are helping them with access to market because we know often that is a 
very big challenge. We may also making sure we're giving them the needed infrastructure so that we can enable them to innovate and also ultimately accelerate their own innovation because you know the stats for SMEs across the continent are very clear. 90% of businesses um, you know, on, in Sub-Saharan Africa are SMEs. Uh, these businesses are contributing to the tune of 40% of GDPs in emerging markets. And therefore we wanna make sure that we play a critical role in accelerating economic development, serving the unmet needs of our African markets. I want to circle back to the points that you were making around the investments you have made uh, in the uh, time you've been on the continent, around three decades in cloud, but specifically artificial intelligence, just given that it is the buzzword right now and everybody's talking about it and everybody wants to know about it. As it does pertain to AI, uh, what are you seeing uh, on the continent about adoption uh, from large enterprises who you service and also from some of the uh, small to medium enterprises who you are focusing on helping to grow? So Africa, very similar to the world, right? There's an AI buzz going on and we are at an inflection point. Uh, the AI breakthroughs that we are seeing today, it's going to change, augment how people live, work and play across the continent globally and for many years to come. And we are just excited that Africa can participate. Now as Microsoft, we are optimistic about the future of AI. It is here. I remember already five years ago, I started saying to customers that, you know, AI is going to become, you know, um, the greatest technology and most defining technology of our time. But as much as we are excited, uh, we want to make sure that as a company, we remain grounded, uh, responsible and cautious about how this technology is used. Now, if you look at sub-Saharan Africa, even though our um, if you look at the readiness overall, the score may be the lowest, but we are seeing some companies are super brave, right? They are already starting to deploy it in their businesses to make sure that they derive value from it. And this actually emerged in the forms of new products that we are seeing, new services, the focusing on driving more efficient operations, but also making sure that people understand how to use this technology to augment what they can do. Now, of course, it is a prevailing belief that AI is a very powerful tool and it will enable people to achieve greater productivity, growth, innovation, satisfaction, and just so much more. Um, if I look at just some of the studies, right, if you look at it, it says that, you know, with the leaps that we've made, it's fair to say that AI have been present, you know, in companies in the last five years. I think it has come a little bit more to the fore, you know, with tools such as ChatGPT. And I think ChatGPT has made it a bit more democratized, pervasive, and far more tangible. But two thirds of companies, in fact, have been deploying AI technology. 75% are investing in it to help them with their processes and their systems. And in fact, um, one Microsoft survey is actually finding that uh, some companies in Africa and as well as the Middle East, you know, are classed as AI pros. Because if you really want to make progress um, in AI, you literally have to formalize this in your overall company strategy. You know, you can't treat this as a standalone project. And I'm quite a big proponent of it that you need to embed AI in your strategy, especially if you want to derive true and long-term value from it. And would you say that that is happening uh, on the continent to the scale that you are seeing uh, elsewhere? I mean, you're giving us a really uh, great numbers in terms of 75% of uh, adoption here or interest uh, in uh, leveling up the use of AI within organizations. But as the picture stands on the continent, where would you say or which regions would you say are leading in the race right now and uh, perhaps which ones could pull up their socks? I would say, Pika, we have pockets of excellence. I mean, we are doing a whole lot of projects where there are, you know, companies uh, in South Africa and, um, you know, our private sector is very brave. You know, there's also projects happening in government. And in fact, I am just recently back, uh, back from Egypt. And this is, in fact, this is a very present conversation. Um, I was quite honored to be keynote speaker um, at the American Chamber of Commerce Forum 
uh, with CEOs just to talk about the impact of AI and the readiness and just what's happening around connectivity. So the appetite is there, you know, Africa is ready. If I think of some of the conversations we're having with our customers in Kenya, they are eager to put their hands on this technology because they understand what they can derive from it. And in fact, I'm on my way actually to Nigeria and uh, meeting a few customers in Lagos and we're looking forward. In fact, this is going to be the topic of discussion in terms of what can you get from AI? What can you derive from it? What it could do from your business? Because that is the interest that our customers are having. Because if you think about it, what is AI? It is centering around giving them the ability to accelerate, the ability to innovate, the ability to be more competitive. So for me, as the leader of Microsoft in Africa, I'm just excited about the possibility that this technology is bringing to the continent. Lillian, I know uh, broadly the investments that Microsoft uh, has uh, made on the continent has resulted in a, in a creation of new jobs. And uh, perhaps that is the uh, desired aim. But I also want to reflect on what has uh, happened in the technology sector, mainly post the uh, pandemic. I mean, during the pandemic, your sector was the uh, saving grace in terms of allowing business to continue. We were able to do what we do uh, remotely using the likes of Teams and all the other innovations that uh, Microsoft and other players had brought in the cloud. Post the pandemic, the picture has looked uh, very different in terms of the number of jobs in the sector. We have essentially in some parts of the world seen a bloodbath of job losses from the tech sector. The argument is that the tech sector hired too much during the pandemic and things were normalizing. But as it does pertain to what the picture looks like going forward and specifically what artificial intelligence will do and its potential impact on changing the game. Should we be worried about jobs in Africa? If you look at some of the challenges that we already have on the continent, and uh, this is the environment uh, within which we operate, no secret, unemployment, high unemployment is a challenge. Um, we have, you know, a lack of digital talent. We have a young population, and on any given day, the median age is between 19 and 24, low internet penetration and and I've seen all the changes and I acknowledge the changes but that is why we talk a lot about the opportunity for people to upskill reskill because the jobs are changing the opportunity is changing we need to help people pivot companies need to pivot this is what we are focusing on and if you think about what we talked about five years ago, three years ago, the very present conversation right now in the tech sector is artificial intelligence. How do we put the technology in the hands of people? But most importantly, how do you empower them to know what to do with that technology, right? So what we try to do is always to make sure that people understand what to do with the opportunity in front of us. What are the changes? For example, if you look at the SME sector, I'm excited about what this opportunity could do for small companies, how that could allow them to scale because bricks and mortar is no longer, you know, your challenge. You can operate, you know, out of one place, you know, in Africa and you could immediately almost become a global business, right? So and it is always about making sure that that balancing act. And I think for us in Africa, that is why when we talk about that, specific that number around 50 million and we talk about 50 million youth it is because our youth is our very present opportunity how do we even make sure that when we do give them the right you know set of skills that they even become a source of talent not just for the continent but even beyond now that's encouraging to hear, uh, but agree with you uh, quite rightly there that the nature and the jobs are changing and it's really important uh, for all stakeholders to keep up with that change. But Lillian, we'll leave it there for now, ma'am. Lillian Barnard, she is the president of Microsoft Africa, uh, helping us uh, wrap up this week's feature, of course, of AI Africa.